Hi, today we're going to illustrate the integration of InTime with Microsoft Visual Studio. We're going to do that using a simple Hello World application. The process of building an InTime application is all done within the Visual Studio environment. Uh, you don't need to learn any new development tools in order to create real-time applications for the InTime kernel. Development is done in the C and C++ languages and assembly, of course. Wizards are provided to help you to generate code templates and, and create a starting point from which to create your real-time code. And likewise, you can debug within the Visual Studio debugger if you're using Visual Studio 2003 or 2005. If you're using Visual Studio 6, you need to use an external debugger we call Spider, which is provided with the system. That debugging is real-time debugging. It's full source level debugging. Uh, inspection of variables is allowed, breakpoints, and so forth. The same sort of debugging you're used to using in Visual Studio because it is the Visual Studio debugger with a special back end to support debugging real-time applications on the in-time RTOS. When you develop applications for an in-time system, you actually create two processes, or at least two processes, one or more Windows processes and one or more real-time processes. In both cases, you use Visual Studio. The difference is that the real-time processes run on the in-time OS, the Windows processes run on the Windows OS. The Windows is not modified in any way, so the way you write your code is as you would normally. There's an NTX DLL that you use to talk to or interface with the real-time processes running on the in-time OS. If you're using a .NET language, there's a wrapper around that so that you can also use .NET languages to access the NTX DLL. Let's get started. From within Visual Studio, we're going to create a new project. You'll notice when you've installed InTime that you'll get some InTime projects. We're going to select the application wizard and we're going to call our application Hello World. We're going to create a full featured application and we're going to include a thread that operates at a regular interval. We're just going to use the simplest sleep thread it's going to wake up every mil every second, a thousand milliseconds, and we'll use the standard defaults otherwise. We could also add, if we were creating an application that required a, a mailbox or a semaphore to coordinate between the Windows side and the, in and the end time side, we could add that code here. If we had an interrupt handler, uh, or if we wanted to use some shared memory to communicate back and forth between the two sides, we could use the wizard to create additional template code for those purposes. In this case, we're going to keep it real simple and we're just going to have this uh, periodic thread. Now we've got the files that were created by the wizard. Uh, Hello World is the file that contains our main. Scroll down here and here's our main. Within main you will find some initialization code. This is just basic code that is used primarily to set up those features we need to support the function that we chose, in this case the sleep function, which is going to be created in a separate thread. And in fact it's also setting up an initialization and a, a cleanup thread. So when we look later on uh, under InTime Explorer, we will see uh, actually two threads existing here. One which is this um, main thread and the second which will be our uh, polling thread. Why don't we open that up? So polling thread is just a simple template. There's not much to it here. We've got a couple debug statements in there which will show up if uh, we're compiling for debug, which will be the case in this example our sleep function that we requested. This is an in-time API function. The help for that function shows up within Visual Studio because all the help is integrated. If I select that and push F1 for help, I will see the help file come up with a definition of that particular function. We can filter for in-time help so that, for example, if we were searching on the printf or something like that, we could get the in-time specific version of printf and not 
um, the Microsoft specific because there is a full ANSI C library provided with the InTime software development kit. So rather than type all this in by hand, I've got a file over here that I'm going to copy and paste over this. And if I recall correctly, there's some mistakes. Yes, we're missing something here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make this a little bit more interesting, actually make it a little more a little easier to see what's going on. We're going to print each time we wake, just going to count the number of times we wake. And we are also going to print each time we do a hello world. If we look at this code, it's fairly simple. We've got an infinite loop. So once this thread begins, we're going to go into an infinite while loop. We're going to go to sleep for one second. This is just a simple delay sleep. This is not a deterministic sleep. Uh, since the debug compiler option is going to be on, we're going to print this poll thread waking up line with the number of times we woke up. And then we're going to print hello world 10 times and then return and go back to sleep. So let's build this. And let's start debugging. Now our printfs show up in a console window. This, uh, the prints go from the in time side and the data is transferred back to Windows. So Windows is actually generating this console window on behalf of in time. Um, it's, it's, it's being done through some code supplied as part of the in time system. Likewise, you could use scanfs if you want to do um, uh, type inputs here. This is simply used primarily, th this is used as a uh, a debugging aid. This is not the sort of thing you would typically use with a real-time application. So it's really there as a convenience to get access to the printf and scanf functions within the ANSI library. And like we're doing here, provide simple debug. And it's great for an example and, and just to get up and running. I'm going to start up InTime Explorer. InTime Explorer is a tool similar to Windows Task Manager or the System Internals Process Explorer. It shows you the processes that are running on the InTime kernel. Now in fact the InTime kernel supports multiple processes. It's not a single application that runs on a simple kernel but rather the kernel is capable of handling multiple independent processes. And we can see here there are one, two, three, four, five, six, about eight uh, processes running. Several of these are processes that are specific to the kernel. In fact, most of these in this particular instance are. And here's our Hello World application that's running. And as I mentioned earlier, there are two threads within this. One is the main thread, which is basically in a uh, halt state. And then one is our thread right now that's running. From this point, we can actually kill this process. So let's delete it. process has gone from the list. If we go here we'll see it's no longer running. There was an exit code thread that was sitting and waiting and that thread ran and printed this particular message at the bottom. Let's try this again. Only this time let's put in some breakpoints and monitor some variables. So let's put in a break at the printf. the first printf and let's put in a break at the second printf. And again we will start the application. It's broken at our first printf. One of the things we can do is select a variable and add it to our watch list. And of course it's a zero like we expect. Let's look at x as well. X is uninitialized at this point. It has not been used. That's why we've got this big oddball number in here. This is the first time through this loop. Uh, we've hit the, the printf. We haven't actually initialized X yet, so it's got whatever was left. So let's continue running. We hit, hit F10. We're single stepping now. So we single step to the 4. We've single stepped to the print. And we're stepping through. You can see 
x changing in value, 3, 4, if we switch back to our printf window, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, we're printing x plus 1, keep in mind. So we're stepping through this. Let's just hit F5 to continue running at full speed. We'll hit each of these. Now we've come out to the next one again. If we continue on, we'll see there. Let's remove this particular breakpoint or just disable it. Continue. So now our only breakpoint is at the top. So now we should see y increasing, it runs all the way through. We never actually see the x increasing, but you can see with each iteration we go one further in y and so on. So there we see some of the basic simple features that you can do using the standard Visual Studio Tools Kit to create real-time applications and debug those real-time applications within Visual Studio. So in summary, I'd like to just go over some of the features that we saw in Visual Studio. Visual Studio is your development environment for creating in-time real-time applications. You edit, compile, link, and debug within the Visual Studio environment. There's no reason to learn another tool. If you have Visual Studio, you have the tools you need to create an in-time application. As we saw, we can display and modify variables, we can use breakpoints in single step, all the features that you're used to using within a Visual Studio environment are there. Another feature we didn't il illustrate is the ability to handle faults. In-time processes are user mode or ring 3 applications. That means if your application has a divide by zero fault or has a pointer that goes out of bounds and reaches beyond its virtual memory space, a fault will be generated just as though you had a Windows application generating fault. In this case, the in-time fault manager comes up and gives you the option of entering Visual Studio at the point where the fault occurred so that you can take a closer look and see what's going on. Other processes within the system, other real-time processes and Windows processes continue to run at speed. The only process that is halted would be that which contains the faulting thread. The InTime Explorer we looked at briefly is a real-time process explorer. It can only see the processes that are on the InTime side of the equation. All processes that run on Windows side, you continue to use your tools to see those processes. Those tools are not aware of what's on the real-time side, so you use both of these in conjunction to monitor your complete system. Likewise, if you're dealing with a remote node, that is uh, a, a copy of the InTime kernel that is running on another system, you can link to that and view the processes running on that system over a network connection. So you're not limited to only viewing processes that are running on your local system. You can also view processes on your remote system. Thank you for taking your time to view this video. I hope it answered questions regarding our InTime RTOS for Windows.